Hello everyone, this is the first video in the series, Programming and NXT Mindstorms for Autonomous Navigation. In this series of videos, we'll see how we can program an NXT Mindstorms to autonomously navigate anywhere you'd like. We'll start off small, such as in our house, and then we can move to other places using additional algorithms that are a little bit more advanced. But in this video, I'd like to start with how we're going to incorporate all these things, just sort of a planning, as you can see here, a plan, how we're going to incorporate all these topics into an NXT Mindstorms. So here on the right, you see the picture of the robot that we'll be using. This is called the five minute bot. If you wanna look at how to build it online, I'm not going to explain how to put the robot together, but it's very easy to do, hence the name five minute bot. But this is just a picture of it. Um, it's missing a few things that we'll include in later videos, such as an ultrasonic sensor for sensing ranges. And we're also going to change this uh, model a little bit. It's not gonna be two wheels. We're gonna implement the bicycle model, but not in not in this series, maybe in a, in a different series where we do different types of localization algorithms. But for the one we'll be covering in this first series, this bot will do just fine. The only thing we'll augment is the addition of an ultrasonic sensor. So if you've ever wondered how we can build an autonomous robot, the first thing we have to address is localization. So what is localization? Hopefully you're familiar with this terminology, but I just wanna reinforce it. Localization is basically getting the robot to know where it is in its environment. Very simple. You and I know where we are based on our perception, right? We have eyes, we, we can see things, we know where we are based on previous experience. Unfortunately, robots don't have eyes, but they have other sensors to help them localize themselves. So there are several localization algorithms that we'll explore in the different series. Uh, for beginning this series, I'd like to use a histogram uh, filter approach. Histogram filter which is non-parametric, meaning it's not going to be Gaussian. It can be multimodal, which is good. It can have multiple belief states. Um, so this is actually a very good introduction to filtering and localization in general. Uh, it's probably the easiest to implement right next to the particle filter, but I think the histogram filter gives a nice approach and there'll be a good segue into other algorithms for, uh, for filtering and for localization. So with the histogram filter, I just want to address some of the things that we'll need. We'll need to represent its environment as a grid. So this is what we'll need a grid world sort of thing, a grid world environment, which is not gonna be that hard to do if we actually go inside of our house or anywhere where it's kind of constrained for an environment. We can just represent tiles or maybe a foot by a foot. That can be a grid and obstacles, of course, will represent them in the grid by maybe ones and open spaces by zeros, unless you wanna represent different types of obstacles. But for the general case, we can just represent this as a grid with obstacles being ones and free spaces being zeros. So this is going to be very easy to implement the histogram filter since we have this grid approach. So we'll talk about histogram filters in the next video, but this is how we're going to approach localization for the first time. Uh, for the first series, we'll do histogram filters. Um, for navigation, what I mean by navigation is essentially planning. I should probably make this a little more explicit. I mean planning. So there are a couple of planning algorithms that we'll explore. Uh, but just for simplicity's sake, just to keep everything kind of uniform and, and easy to work with, we're actually going to start with dynamic programming, DP, and we'll construct the table initially. So before the robot even uh, navigates, it'll it'll have a map of how to approach the goal in an optimal way, no matter of where, no matter where it is. So we'll do DP, which is dynamic programming abbreviated. We'll do this for the first series, and then in later series, maybe we'll do A star or different planning algorithms. But for this one, we'll stick to DP which it's good uh, based on some properties that it has that I'll talk about a little bit later. Um, for motion, this is where I was going to change the model of this robot a little bit to the bicycle model. But like I said, for the histogram filter, it's not that bad. Uh, for motion, again here, it's tentative to use the bicycle model, but it's not uh, necessary. But in future videos, we might switch to the bicycle model. Uh, we'll also do PID control, PID control. Because these robots, although they're they're really cool and, and they're nice and, and fun to play with, they're not you know 100% accurate. If you tell them to turn 90 degrees, they won't always turn 90 degrees. Uh, so we'll, we'll actually use PID control to get this robot to drive in a straight line. Because if you don't, the errors actually accumulate. And even though small degrees might not make much of a difference, when you leave this thing running around over time, uh, the errors are, are pretty nasty. So we'll do PID control with the a gyroscope, gyroscope sensor. So we'll do this to, to tell the robot to, to navigate in a straight line. And additional, this is basically things that after we get this robot working, what are other things we can do? What are cooler things we can work with? 
and one that I really wanted to use was SLAM, Simultaneous Localization and Mapping. So we don't actually have to provide it with this grid world-like environment. It can figure out its map on its own. So we can kind of just set it off anywhere. Of course, with uh, certain restrictions, we can't just let it set off and it'll know. We have to apply the SLAM algorithm correctly, but probably SLAM, and in this case, maybe Fast SLAM or Graph SLAM. But right now, I'm, I'm liking Fast SLAM a little bit better. So we'll probably implement SLAM a little bit later. Um, apart from SLAM, some other perception. What I really wanted to do is maybe do some sort of camera thing where we attach a camera and it could be my phone or any phone that ha that's Bluetooth capable. So we can process images, we can take pictures with the phone or with anything, send them to a computer for image processing, maybe using OpenCV or anything like that, and then send the whatever signals back to the robot. So that if we're looking for certain things or we just want in general camera uh, you know, pictures, we can actually do this. So this is another uh, for perception, maybe cameras. It's going to be a fun one. I haven't figured all this out exactly, but these are just going to be ways to approach it. Maybe cameras for, for pictures and anything else, maybe robotic arms. Robotic arms so we can actually do useful things and not just drive around. If we're looking for a certain item, once the robot has found it with the camera, with image recognition, maybe we can use the robotic arms to bring it back. So this is the plan. Again, this is why I call this uh, plan up here, right over here, the title is plan, but this is just the general guideline and I know it all seems very oh this should work and it's you know it's better easier said than done but I already have a prototype for all of this except for the slam part except for the additional part all of this is pretty much working so even though it may seem too far out it's actually not that far out uh, I already have it ready but I just want to make a, a, a tutorial series to actually teach how to do this so this is what we're going to do and Here's how we're going to approach it. In the next video, we'll talk about localization with the histogram filter.